OpenAI just announced something that could completely shake up the automation world. It's a complete agent builder that might replace tools like NADN, Make.com and Zapier. So are those tools actually dead? Now before you start panicking and start deleting workflows, let's break this down. Because while it sounds scary, the truth is way more interesting. And to be honest, the opportunities might be way bigger than the risk itself. And here's the crazy part about it. This isn't just about automating Slack messages or any kind of spreadsheets. Imagine these agents running your sales calls, your customer support, your appointment settings, your lead reactivations. So if you combine that with voice AI, which we by the way also got a new GPT real-time version for it that is 70% cheaper, this whole thing is going to be incredible. So is this the end of automation tools or potentially even the beginning of something even bigger? Let's dive right into it. Now if you don't know who I am, my name is Janis Moore and I run a voice AI agency since the beginning of 2024 in which we've helped business owners up to billion dollar companies build and deploy awesome voice AI agents that actually bring results. And because we had such a crazy lead flow at the beginning of this year we started an educational program where we teach people on how to leverage voice AI a for their business and to start a business with it now if you're interested in any of that you will find more details at the end of this video so what is OpenAI's agent builder actually now I could have just read the blog post which I did but I also ran it through OpenAI and summarize it and here's what OpenAI says by itself it lets you create agents that take instructions connect tools use APIs hold memories and run logic all inside of the OpenAI platform you can think of it as a no code slash drag and drop way on how you can build a agents or agentic systems inside of OpenAI without touching a single line of code. And the best thing is that it's already live and you can try leveraging it. If you head over to platform.openai.com, you will be able to find the agent builder in the left side of the menu. And here right on my screen, you can see an example of it. And I'm just going to briefly guide you through so that you get a hang of it. You can see that we have the start of a conversation. And then we have notes. This is basically very similar to what you probably have seen already from the other workflow automation tools. These notes have a specific function that do things. And you can see that we can route them depending on certain criteria. But then again, we can also set conditions and we can connect agents to it, which is the main aspect of this whole workflow, which enables us to basically use LLMs or little brains inside of our workflows that do certain things. So this one here is one of their standard workflows that I found for customer support agents. So you can see that A, when a message comes in, we check against guardrails, then we qualify what this message is actually about. So whether or not the user wants to return an item, it wants to cancel the subscription, or it wants to get more information. And depending on that, we route them to a specific agent that can answer in a certain way. And here you can see as well that if it's a return agent, we're going to ask a user for their approval, whether or not whatever they this return agent returned is actually something they want to approve or reject. And depending on that, it would just go down another path. Now, this is an example, so that's why it ends. But this is the main gist of it. You can also drag and drop all those elements around. You can see as well, you have a little sidebar where you can adjust all of them depending on their settings. So you can definitely go through that. And if you'd like to see a whole tutorial on how to build them, let me know in the comments below. Below. I'm very happy to make a video about it. I already played around and it's incredible what you can do with it. And I definitely see some use cases that I can see popping off, but more on that later. So the big question is, does this actually kill N8N? And the question is yes, but no at the same time because I believe that this literally just separates the two things that I initially didn't want to see in a workflow automation platform like NADN. And that is something that I'm very, very careful of because I built a workflow automation tool successfully that I sold in 2023. So I have been running through these workflow setups and I know what goes into them. Now, NADN is doing an amazing job. And I also believe that their setup really, really is beneficial by bringing in AI and agents or agentic systems that you can leverage inside of workflows. And to be honest, for me, these are completely different things. Now, N8N just took the hype train and started building towards what the user wants to see, which is obviously having AI integrations, integrating with things like AI agents, integrating with things like MCPs, which is great, but it's not the main use case of what I'm using N8N for. Don't get me wrong, I have also played with N8N agents, and they are great, but they are not something that I'm really using in a lot of active scenarios, at least not for what you might expect. But let me explain. When we are talking about workflow automations, which is the actual term for it, we talk about having some sort of triggers and the trigger gets any kind of input variable. So any kind of information that comes in and based on this information, we execute actions down a pathway until we get a certain outcome. In that case, it's very deterministic. So we always have if else statements, which also means because we have sort of programmed it, even in a no code way, we have a mostly 100% accuracy. And if we don't have a 100% accuracy, we definitely see an error. It is as simple as that. It's a very straightforward and static way on making sure that whatever we run through is actually 100% accurate. And that is exactly what I believe our workflow automations for. These are for things that don't necessarily need any human involvement or very variability or a very general setup. They are literally meant for a specific purpose to execute the purpose and to get it done. And that obviously with the highest potential accuracy. Now, if we talk about anything agent wise, agents can 
make issues or most likely are going to make issues especially if you don't know how to prompt engineer we've built so many voice agents for massive companies and you can imagine that the biggest thing that we need to spend our time on is prompt engineering making sure that the agent doesn't hallucinate making sure that it actually follows the script making sure that it covers edge cases this is all stuff we need to debug so we don't even consider ourselves technical experts we consider ourselves conversational artists because that's literally what we do. We adjust and tweak sentences to make sure the outcome of the agent becomes way better. So the words that you are using are incredibly powerful and need to be really optimized towards you getting a really good result with it. And it is kind of the same thing if it comes to this agent builder. Any kind of agents that you use, whether that is here or that is in N8N or any other workflow automation tool, you will automatically decrease the accuracy because you rely on agents or any kind of LLMs to generate things for you. Now, obviously they get better, but they still have an error rate. And that error rate is not often just because of them. It is also because you don't know necessarily how to talk to them or how to define the actual instructions. And you can't be blamed for it either, because even if you would be the smartest person on earth, there will always be edge cases that you can't just think of because it's something that your target group or whatever this thing integrates with actually uses in a slightly different way, which might already break the perception of what you considered a 100% accurate conversation or workflow. And because of that, it is very risky using an agentic builder, an agentic workflow, or even just an agent node inside of your workflow automation to get a really good outcome. And this might not affect everyone, but if you talk about a lot of money, big money, these little things make a massive difference. If you have a workflow that runs a million or hundred million times every single day, you can imagine how crazy this world would look like if only a single thing of that breaks. So for me, workflow automations are very static, which is why this whole agentic workflow builder that OpenAI released differs completely. Because this literally aims towards more general tasks where we have an AI involved that can also hallucinate, that can bring results, which still need some sort of human supervision to make sure we get a really good outcome. Now, obviously, all I'm gonna tell you now is at the current date and time. This might change in the future, but I do believe that there's a big difference in between an agentic workflow builder and a static automation workflow builder. And we should make a clear cut and OpenAI basically just outlines that. So to put this in terms of where N8N differs from this agent builder that OpenAI released is that OpenAI literally just focuses on this smaller part of the agentic systems where it takes the agents and it tries to build workflows around that rather than the full workflow automation stack because it doesn't want to be a workflow automation platform. So does it actually replace N8N? I don't think so. I think it's going to be both very, very viable and can both be used at the same time. However, if a platform like this is literally specialized on agentic interaction, I would most likely pivot my agentic interactions towards something like the agent builder of OpenAI, while I have N8N run for the actual optimized task, what it's meant to be used for, which is streamlined workflow automations. Things come in from A, they end up at B, there's no error rate in between. I always know what outcomes I'm supposed to expect, how this thing should look like, and that's it. So these workflow builders are for a more customized way on how we as a human interact with AI, which can be at the forefront. Now, I want you to really understand that, that an agent builder is probably an intermediate that you would put between yourself and something like N8N. This piece in the middle can be something like an agentic workflow builder because it is what actually validates the things that we want as a human. It can streamline that information. It can then send it off to those workflow automations to actually handle tasks more precisely. So I do believe that we're gonna have a sort of hybrid setup that actually allows us to not just communicate in a better way with AI by just leveraging the features on where it's actually really good at and getting general information, outputting that and informing us so that we can make more informed decisions and then sending them off by itself to workflow automation tools, which might be N8N, which might be something like trigger.dev or even something completely custom. The main goal is that this is a layer prior to that, that we put between ourselves and technology to make sure that we can interact with it on a more smart level. So yes, it does affect N8N and it does remove parts of it in my opinion. And if this is just being built a little bit more robust and I have seen already locks, but the locks are really hard. That is one of the big things that we obviously need. If you want to run automations, you want to always see all of the executions, every single thing that happens so you can reproduce it or check it, which is something that they offer on OpenAI as well, but different than what we've seen with N8N, for example. So this whole utility around it becomes incredibly important. And this is where we see a big difference in between workflow automation tools compared to an agent builder, for example. Now, while this might look a bit scary, if you have watched it until here, I can tell you that there's an even bigger opportunity coming, coming along that you can take advantage of to get even more out of this whole agent builder. Because as you can imagine, it's not just a new platform that you're most likely also familiar with already 
if you know a bit about AnyDen, because all those workflow automation tools are kind of working equally. And before I'm gonna share with you a couple of really cool things that you could try to build out using those agent builders and where you can focus on selling services, let me give you a quick intro on how a workflow on an agent builder actually looks like. And I wanna make sure I explain that in a very basic way so you can really get it. Now, as you can see here in this customer support agent, we have a start node and we have a end node. Now, I want you to imagine that whenever you build this into a chat interface, for example, that every single message that you send as a user runs through the start node. So it's not that this workflow will execute, stop at some point and then continue to listen, for example, for your message. This literally runs through all the time until it is at a listen step where you can actually put an input in. So like a user approval, for example. If you start a conversation, this message goes in, it will start running through here, does all the validations, classifies things automatically, goes to the return agent, the return agent already says something, and then here it would basically be over, which means if you would go into the retention agent, there's no node connected after, which means this workflow execution of your agentic workflow is over. When you send another message, it will basically start again from the start and it will start running again through the whole same setup. Now, the alternative is obviously that you have those kind of listen nodes like this one. If a user wants to approve something or has to reject something, you will see that in the app. And then when a user presses a certain button or approves or rejects it, it goes down a separate way. So you have some sort of listen step that basically waits for your input to decide what to do next. So this is the main concept. So every single message goes in here goes out there and then basically just starts over again from the from the beginning of the workflow so that's a very easy way on how you can understand this whole thing i mentioned this message example because that is literally meant for these agentic workflow builders you could obviously do something like this as well with any dent by using certain integration integrations like telegram etc but this is literally just for the purpose of having conversations with something to have things in a more natural way this is exactly the purpose of this this is why it's designed in that way and if you now think where this thing comes handy is all of the integrations that you can build around it a, you can implement those things into company tech stack, meaning if someone runs on Slack, for example, you can build agentic systems that are now directly integrating into Slack without using external systems like NADN to get those things done. You can literally just build them right in here and then extend the utility to their own tech stack or potentially, even if you want to use NADN, via tool calls to NADN. Because every single agent, and that's something you can see here as well, you can define tools. And those tools can basically also be MCP servers, which you already know that you can also add the whole N8N setup as an MCP server, which you've also seen on my channel potentially. Or you even can add a function, which allows you as well to send data back and forth, like a request, basically just an HTTP request. So you can integrate it with mostly anything, even N8N workflows, if it comes to a deterministic point where you really just need to have a 100% accuracy to the data that you're trying to re retrieve. So you can see again that this is going to be a hybrid approach. Now you can just use a system like this to build incredibly powerful agents on OpenAI on their platform and basically just benchmark which ones are better. I do believe at this point that N8N might still be super duper valuable if it comes to building agentic systems because they are obviously on the market for way longer. So they also have more data, which is most likely what it comes down to. But this system, the more it matures and the more people are going to use it, I can tell you that this agentic builder is probably going to be superior because it has more detailed and nuanced knowledge towards agentic workflows, which is exactly what it's focusing on. And because it integrates into those standards by default, we most likely also also see more and better integrations and a more robust setup around that setup rather than using an external tool for that purpose. So all that said, I am a very big fan of separating what we call these workflow or these agentic systems compared to the workflow automations that are pretty much just static rather than having both combined in the same platform. So given that knowledge, I really hope you get a better hang that you can leverage those tools to build out your services, deepen your knowledge, and then also resell that knowledge to other people a, by building solutions on top of those agentic builders for them, potentially just providing AI audits where you guide them on how to use those setups because they are obviously becoming pretty complex, and C, by optimizing them, so adding additional services on top of that. If you've seen my channel, you know that I'm a big fan of handover solutions, so basically one of things that you hand over to a client so that they can work with it and they own everything, because in my opinion, it's the best way to get started as a beginner and the best way to learn things without getting fully responsible of the solution that you actually build at least on a long-term scale. And if you'd like to learn more about that or would like to work with us, you should definitely check out the description below. We have one of the biggest voice AI communities out there, if not the biggest one, called Voice AI Bootcamp. It is linked in the description, so you can check it out. It's completely free. You can learn with all of us. And we are now over 6,000 members learning constantly about voice AI and how to use those automation tools to get things done. I am still the biggest believer that voice AI is the quickest and most general interface on how we can communicate with technology. And that's not going anywhere until we have brand 
brain implants. So that said, I hope this video gives you a couple of cool insights. And in case you'd like to learn more, I'm very happy to answer any of your questions in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.